Okay, welcome to part four of CAMH REDCap survey training. As always, I'll start by pointing out that we're using REDCap version 9.1.16, so if you're using a different version, things might look a little bit different to you, but in generally, the same principles should apply here. Now, in the past three videos, uh, we looked at a bunch of different uh, aspects of the survey module. Um, so in part one, we looked at setting up a survey and uh, going through our different survey settings here. In part two, we looked at deplo uh, deploying our survey, either through the public-facing survey link or through the participant list. And in part three, we looked at automated survey invitations, um, which I've actually gone ahead and disabled for the purposes of this video, because I don't want them messing with uh, what we're going to be doing here. Uh, and I'll just point out, we did that by changing this from active to not active. Um, but what we're going to be doing in this video is looking at some of these remaining survey options. So in this case, the survey queue, survey login, and survey notifications. Uh, we're not going to worry about upload or download of auto invitations uh, for this demonstration because this really only applies if you've got kind of a larger longitudinal project with tons and tons of uh, automated invitations, which we don't in this case. So first of all, let's take a look at survey notifications because uh, this is relatively straightforward. Perfect. So all we have here is what will be a list of all of our different uh, surveys that we have available. And we can select our email address from these, this drop-down list here, or basically any of the users that are on this project, I guess I should say. Um, and so what will happen now is that anytime somebody completes either of these surveys, uh, now that I've enabled notifications, um, excuse me, uh, we'll receive an email. So this is just a handy thing to have, especially if you have automated survey invitations in place. Uh, just if you want to get that notification when somebody's completed that um, uh, survey. So for example, if you had an automatic survey invitation set up to send out a week after somebody completed the first one and a week goes by and you still haven't uh, received that notification, you might want to go in and check to make sure it was actually sent or maybe follow up with the participant to figure out what might be going on there. Um, the notifications is something that I, I do use pretty frequently on my projects. Okay, the next thing to look at is the survey login. And I think this is something that people might not realize is here, or maybe they're not interested or, or what. Uh, at least for me, uh, I always forget that it exists, but I think it is pretty useful. And so what the survey login does is it will let your respondents um, or basically it will force your respondents to enter like a little login password before they can continue. So this might be used in place of the save and return later feature um, where normally they would be given a return code uh, which may be difficult to remember or maybe a little more inconvenient. Uh, with the survey login um, it's it might be a little easier for people to remember their, their login or <clears throat> maybe a little bit more secure because they'll have to remember what it is as opposed to you giving them a, a survey code. So the way this works is, first of all, you would enable it. And then you need to select a field that will be used as uh, the login field. So in this case, I haven't actually really done a good job of setting something up, but REDCap is going to be looking for, I guess, a free text field. Um, so maybe we could say on our smoking screener, all I have is age here, but maybe we could have created a field called password or I don't know, number or something, but basically some kind of field to collect a piece of data that's relevant to the respondent. Um, I'm just going to go with age for now because that's all I have. Um, but it's it, this is essentially the field that's going to be referenced as their quote unquote password. Uh, if you want, you can actually enable multiple fields here. I'm not sure how many you can do, but uh, one or two is probably fine. And then you've got some additional options here. Uh, maximum, minimum number of fields above that are required. Oh, I see. So looks like you can probably do three. Yep. And then you can specify how many of those need to be correct. Interesting. Um, and then you can say whether this applies to all your surveys on your project, or you can actually um, customize this on a survey by survey basis through that survey settings page. And we can come back and take a look at that. In fact, I'm just going to set it. Uh, we've got a little custom error message here, which we can put in. And then finally, uh, we can specify how many 
um, attempts there are. So this is like a pretty standard uh, setup for any kind of authentication step. So you know you might say after five um, failed attempts, lock them out for five minutes. This is the type of thing where <laughs> everybody will always like try to type too fast and enter their password in five times incorrectly and then get annoyed because they're locked out for five minutes, but is what it is. Um, okay, so now that we've enabled that, uh, I want to actually go into my PHQ9 and specify that in my survey settings. Uh, where is it? I know it's around here somewhere. Here we go. Uh, enforce survey login. So um, I'll just say yes to that. And you'll see here that uh, since we've enabled the survey login, um, I'm interested in it. We'll let us do save and return later. Um, but it's basically saying that instead of return codes, um, it's going to use the survey login. So just good to be aware of. So we will save that. And just to point out now how this works, um, let's say, so this could happen via automatic survey invitation. So somebody could receive a link through their email. Uh, or this is another way just to get into our survey here. And you'll actually notice that from the previous video, we still have this invitation scheduled uh, to send tomorrow. And if you hover over it, you will see the uh, invitation there. But if we just wanted to get right into this, we could come into the form view and open up the survey this way. And now, because we've enabled the login, uh, we've got this little authentication field here. So if I remember correctly, I think I put in 33. Great, and there it is. So just like that, now we can uh, continue on with our survey. So it just provides that sort of extra authentication step to ensure that whoever is answering these uh, surveys is the person who um, uh, answered your first one. Uh, actually, let's have a, just a look at what happens if you try to put in the wrong answer. Oh, well, it's not going to let me do that because my survey login session is still active. OK, fair enough. Um, so yeah, I mean, if I had entered it wrong, I would have just got that little custom message where I said, sorry, incorrect password. So I will leave without saving any changes there. Um, so yeah, so that's the, the survey login feature there. And, and I think this is the type of thing that people have sort of asked me if, if it's possible in RegCap, um, where they sort of like circled around this type of idea. So uh, it's good to know that it exists because I think I think it can be quite useful in some cases. Okay, so the last of the survey options here is the survey queue. And this is certainly the most complicated of uh, the uh, three options here. And well, I say most complicated, it doesn't look too bad here, but uh, believe you me, I have seen uh, survey queues and I've actually built some survey queues that are just totally incredibly complicated and uh, can be a lot to handle sometimes, especially if you have a really um, long project, like a longitudinal project with many events and many um, different arms and different forms. It's something that can sort of like spiral out of control <laughs> pretty quickly. Uh, but luckily for the purposes of this demonstration, we've just got a very simple setup here. So. What the survey queue does is allows you to deploy your surveys uh, conditionally. So in some ways, it's pretty similar to what we talked about with automated survey invitations in the last video. Uh, the difference being that this time, instead of sending an email to the person to continue on to uh, subsequent surveys, we can basically um, just do all of that conditional logic right in here. Um, so yeah, so instead of sending an email, the person will just be able to continue sort of in real time. Um, so for example, if, if the participant is sitting with you in the clinic, let's say, or in a research office, and um, you have given them a tablet and they need to work through like a conditional uh, set of surveys based on their responses. So if we continue using the same example as we used in our previous video, let's say we wanted to deploy the PHQ-9 only if the person had completed um, their screening survey and answered yes that they want to quit. Well, in that, ca in that case, it's pretty straightforward. Um, all we need to do is click Activate. And then if you recall from last video, this will look very similar. We just want to say um, smoking screening survey is complete. And then we'll put in our logic, which in this case is ss underscore quit, I think. Yes. 
quit equals one. Oops. Uh, in indicating yes, and then um, this isn't pivotal, but if you don't click this auto start button, they're going to go to a survey queue page, and they'll need to click the link to start the survey, which is fine. Maybe in some cases you want to do that, but for me, I find auto start is the way to go because it just makes things simpler. So that's great. So um, maybe I'll try opening a new form just to show you how that works. So we can go through and, oops, uh, this is not what I want to do. I want to complete this in survey mode. So in this case, I'm just going to use the public facing survey link, which is fine. Uh, so we'll go through and complete this. So first of all, let me just show you, let's say I say I don't smoke cigarettes. Uh, once we hit submit, we'll hit close survey, and then that's it, the person's done. Now by comparison, if we were to do the same thing, in Toronto, uh, I smoke cigarettes, I want to quit, and submit. Uh, oh yeah, so we still have our survey login, so we can put that in. But obviously you'll see that we go right now into the PHQ9, and we can go ahead and complete that, um, which... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to bother doing. I think I can just submit the blank. Yeah. And then once they complete the survey, they're actually taken to this survey queue page um, that shows that they've completed everything they need to. I actually don't love this page. I wish that we could kind of just get rid of it sometimes because I don't think the participant always needs to see everything that they've completed. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, we actually can't enable it, so just have to live with it. Um, but really, that's that's all there is to it. Uh, it's like I said, pretty similar to automated survey invitations, but this is really more for like if you have the person kind of sitting with you, or or eh, maybe not even that case. It, it's more if you needed to deploy a certain set of um, uh, surveys based on conditional logic, and you didn't want to have to like send a person a new email every single time with this automated survey invitations. This kind of just does it all in one shot. So if that's your use case, it's pretty handy. Feel free to tinker around with it. Um, maybe trying to uh, add some new events or new surveys. Uh, and I think you'll find it's it's fairly uh, intuitive, um, at least with, with simple projects. So I think that does it for now. Um, we've covered uh, quite a bit of material here. Uh, I'm not sure what video we'll do next. Uh, so for now, I guess uh, we'll just sign off and I will say good luck with your RegCap development.